Hi, thanks for tuning in today. We are going to be talking about um, emergency situ situations where you may need to provide somebody with some stitches. Um, this is like a situation that's more extreme than the average situation where you would normally go to a doctor or a hospital to get the help you need. We're talking a massive emergency where you cannot get to help and somebody's life may depend on it. So today I have my mother-in-law with me and she has been a nurse for pretty much ever. <laughs> and um, she is going to demonstrate how we can do this in an emergency emergency situation. I can't very well talk today, but, um, and we're going to go ahead and go over some of the items that you'll need, how you get yourself prepared, and then the steps to do it. Okay, so the most important thing that people of nowadays should know about is stop the bleed. This here has come about uh, um, through our military, and it is uh, the absolute keynote in stopping the bleed and, and preserving lives. This I received at uh, my hospital, who here locally... The hospital makes no money on these. They sell these kits at cost. Um, you can look, go online and learn about them. But usually most places, if you just go online to an area close to you, uh, it is absolutely wonderful education on how to do this, on what they have learned with trauma. Because if you don't have blood, you are dead. So you don't have to worry about CPR or anything else. You've got to stop the bleed. So this is for mass trauma. This is your go-to for stopping the bleeding for any major gunshot wound or anything else. That being said, if you don't have the stop the bleed kit, or if it is something not quite that bad, but say you're out hunting, hours, miles away from any medical, uh, whatever help that you could have. You are some wild pioneer person. Um, people nowadays uh, don't even know how to sew a button on. So if you were at the place where you have uh, major trauma, things you should know. You're in the wild, so it is not going to be a sterile environment. Just know that. Even in your own home, it's not going to be sterile. The most you could hope for, it would probably be cleaning it with soap and water. If you were to put alcohol on it, that is going to hurt so bad, you're probably going to render somebody unconscious with pain or that type of stuff. Hydrogen peroxide is not nearly as painful um, and so there is that. So if you need to clean it, whatever. But say you've got a gunshot wound or something, you need to simply sew it together until you can get to help. The thing is, time once again, the hospital, the doctor can get antibiotics to them, but you have to have somebody being present there. So... This is just the minor, most minor. I've threaded a needle, so you just put thread through the needle. And I'm going to use two, um, two layers to hold together. Now, to put a knot in thread, you wrap your thread around your finger and roll it off and then pull it tight. And that's going to make a knot. Okay, there you have it. Old fashioned knot. And this here was a doll my mom had made for my kids. So I gotta put my glasses on. So you just go through and pull it up. Yeah. Pull this up here. Okay. Okay. So you're we gonna got, we got a really bad wound here. We got stuffing coming out. We got stuffing coming out. <laughs> okay, so the easiest way. What you could do, you could tie it and sew, but really in reality, I put the knot in because I don't want to, if you're shaking and you're scared, you're probably going to pull it through. You don't want to pull it through. But the best way to do it would be to simply 
come through and pull it tight. Now, you don't wanna be worrying about, do I have a square knot or a granny knot? So a square knot you do right over left, left over right, and when you're shaking and you're scared, you don't have the time for that. So simply, there's an easier way, because if you do right over left, right over left, you got a granny knot instead. So tie and then tie again, okay? Or now I will show you how you can do a couple of ways, depending on like this one here gapped on me, right? So what I would do then is I would simply, let's get that out of the way. Let's go back here and we are do, gonna do a running stitch to pull it tight, okay? Because it doesn't matter. This is a temporary, this is temporary. Now I'm gonna go through this where this is a double hole, you can tell. And should you have some kind of a wound like this, you're just gonna do a running stitch, okay? And running stitch is the same in e any, um, any uh, facility in human or in a doll. So it's just <laughs> a running stitch. This is not what a surgeon uses, let me tell you. When they sew you together, each stitch is separate. But to get somebody there, if you're just doing something quickly, this will be a quick running stitch, okay? So depending on how you're going, and there's so much tension on this, it's the easiest way simply just to do this. Okay, now, let's, uh, so we got that one done. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna just go under here and come out at this other one. Once again, I think this fabric and everything is pulling so tight, I don't that um, I'm going to be able to do a stitch because it's just going to be pulling against me to do individual stitches. But I will give this a try. Let me flip this doll here because I'm right-handed. And let's turn it and see if I can make an individual stitch that's going to hold. Okay, now... Here we go. So you got a couple ways you can do it. It doesn't really matter. You're gonna do right over left, left over right. It doesn't really matter. Just do whatever you have to to tie it. Remember, if you've ever gone fishing, how you tie uh, the weight on. Remember how you do that or you tie a hook on. You just do see that one held together much tighter and so i know so did i think oh is that a square knot or a granny knot granny knot's going to slip out just make it three ties and go on with your life okay now we're going to take our little scissors cut that off leave enough so that the doctors have something to work with okay you don't want them to have to when they take them off to cut into because there's going to be swelling here where you've tied it shut. There will be swelling and it's harder to cut it off. It's just much more easy. You want it to be secure enough that it will hold together during transport. There, let's try one more knot here. Okay. And so I'm going to stick this. All of this is clean. Nothing is sterile. If you had a, um, a suture kit, I would use that. A suture kit is pretty much always with a curved needle. This is a uh, embroidery needle, so it's not, whoops, I only went through. So it's not uh, so easy to, to work with. And once again, that loosened up there at the very end there. But still, I'm just gonna put it together because it's just to hold it for an emergency until you get to the doctor. Oops, that's the wrong thing. This here is your needle, your scissors. So this here is a forcept. If you have those that can help to pick gravel, bits of stuff out that you don't want to lock in there. This here is a hemostat or needle holder. You can use that if you're, if you got a couple things going on, you can use the, you can pull it through and then 
hold your needle to keep it in place while you fool around with things. And this is your hemostat for sure. This is a curved edge and this is a hemostat. So if you need those. The other thing that you want to have is you want to have, uh, this is perfect. This is like a pressure dressing that you can put on just to hold down. When you're putting pressure on to stop the bleeding, it's going to hurt. And people will say, oh, no, that hurts. But you've got to have it, you've got to stop the bleeding. So depending, if you can see that it's stopping the bleeding, you're, you're okay. If, um, depending if you've got an artery or something. So however much it takes, if you've got a, uh, cut through an artery and then you can see the blood pulsing, then you want enough to see, uh, your fingers pale. You want to be stopping that circulation for a bit so that, uh, those arteries and stuff will stop. And that is going to hurt. You can imagine your child. No, don't imagine your child. Anyhow, you can imagine somebody and the pain is very significant. But once again, it's uh, saving their life. Okay. And then um, if you're just using a, like a, a bandage or a steri strip. Yes. So these are what's called steri strips if you happen to have them around your home. Um, or wherever you're at. And uh, let me see, is this the Benz? This is the Benzoin. So this Benzoin compound, they can use this to uh, put around the skin. You don't want it near in the wound at all, but this will just help uh, pieces of adhesive or different band-aids to stay secured. It's, it's like extra stick. It dries clear. Uh, but it just helps things to stay. Uh, so I'm going to show you on this, these steri strips, and the steri strips can stay up to six weeks if they're applied correctly. You're, we're not looking at that, but this is just something in addition. So because this is this long, so I don't think you need something this long on a wound that size. So I would snip this. Then how you take care of these is you they're pre-scored down on this end and you would take one and see it becomes half that size. If you, you, you can use benzoin or you don't need to and then you can just apply these. You uh, can apply as many as you need to make sure it's held. Let me show you here. So uh, depending on how well you think your sutures are holding together, you can put them like a quarter inch apart. And these come in, this is a quarter inch. They come in half inch and half inch and quarter inches are the basic sizes. They do have some larger ones um, here. This is a half inch. And um, so it just depends on how many you would use or how many you need, how thick. You can put them just side by side. So that's just so you know for extra securement. They are uh, they are a great uh, way. Suture is going to be a stronger than a steri strip. Steri strip you can also use like a butterfly on a little head wound. Well, not that you would cut this off on a person, but let's just say you had this. You could just so this is your little owie, your head wound on something. And you because poor dolls really get my uh, good taken care of today. Was, yeah, was taken <laughs> care of by boys, you can tell. And so you could just take a little steri strip and just tape it across and it'll seal it so that it can heal that way. But we went over so many different things and hopefully it gives you an idea of what you may need to be aware of to do in the event of this type of emergency. I did want to point out that... These particular items here that she had with, my daughter needed stitches many years ago, and the um, doctor said, do you want these? Now, I had never been asked that before, and I did not know that was a, a thing. So if you're ever in the hospital, apparently you can request to have your utensils to come with you, and that's a great way to 
to save these aside and use them for a prep. So I've held on to these for years. And then of course you would just need to sanitize or sterilize uh, depending on your situation. Anyway, hopefully you got um, something out of this today. And we do have another video that will be coming out. And this is all about your medical supplies and what you should have on hand. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for helping with this. And until next time.